In a 9-0 unanimous decision, the Supreme Court just sided with religious liberty in a foster care case out of Philadelphia. And this is one that people were watching because in a way it pitted the religious liberty rights of the Catholic Church versus LGBTQ interests in foster care. And this was kind of a throwdown. People did not expect a nine to zero unanimous ruling. So what is this case about? What does this ruling mean? And most importantly, what did the court leave out of this decision that is basically at least as important as what they put into it, if not more so? Let's talk about it. I'm Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. I'm a lawyer. I'm also a legal and political commentator on YouTube and on Odyssey. Wherever you're watching, hit like, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications. Don't miss any videos. We got great stuff coming out basically every day. So get your news fix in here on this legal stuff. All right, here we go. This article is from Fox News. If you want to follow it, it's in the description below. We're going to take a peek at it. But let's read the headline and then I'll explain what's going on. Supreme Court sides with Catholic foster agency that excludes same-sex couples in a 9-0 to zero ruling. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote the majority opinion. Okay, so here's what's happening. Philadelphia is a major U.S. city. It has a lot of people in it. They need foster care services, which are provided by the city, right? Foster care is typically done by government in these cities. However... Because the foster care issue can get so big and require so many resources, they tend to contract with other organizations rather than having government employees for all of this stuff. And in those contracts, one of the organizations that Philadelphia contracts with is the Catholic Church, and it's in the certification of foster parents. So if you don't know about how the foster care system works, to become a foster parent, you don't just say, hey, I want to be a foster parent, and then suddenly they're showering you with kids. It may feel like that sometimes, but the process is a little bit more involved. Parents have to undergo a background check. They tend to have to undergo uh, ongoing training on a yearly basis. They have an amount of training that they need to do. They need to have their homes inspected to make sure that the home is a suitable place. Those inspections tend to come with some interviews where interviewers will go out and look for various red flags uh, in, in the person's sort of answers and, and stuff like that. They want to make sure that they're putting kids to the best of their ability into safe environments. And a lot of times uh, they fail to do that correctly, but they try. They at least try to get kids into safe environments. Lots of problems. I'm not praising the foster care system. I have been uh, I have been a foster parent. I know plenty of foster parents. I have seen how ugly the system can get. It is not something that I think is great, but it is there. And so with this, there's some level of certification that goes into the foster parents. So the city of Philadelphia contracts with various organizations to certify foster parents to help them get through uh, getting the amount of people they need to take care of as many kids as possible. One of those organizations is the Catholic Church. Now, the Catholic Church will not certify LGBTQ couples. They won't do it. They will not cert certify them as suitable foster parents citing religious exemption or uh, their religious beliefs. So, the Catholic Church will not say that a gay couple can be uh, foster parents. Now, this is just the Catholic Church and just their certification process. Any other organization in Philadelphia that is contracting with the city can certify gay couples to be uh, to be foster parents. This does not particularly exclude gay couples or bi or whatever trans couples from being foster parents in Philadelphia. Just from being certified through the Catholic Church, as foster parents in Philadelphia, all right? And that is kind of important to all of this. So there's the ground. Philadelphia says, we're not going to contract with the Catholic Church anymore because we disagree with them not certifying gay couples or whatever based on their religious beliefs. Well, suddenly you have a government canceling a contract 
based on the religious beliefs of the other party. And now we're into strict scrutiny territory. Now the government has to have a compelling government interest in this particular exemption from their contract, and they have to narrowly tailor their action to further their compelling government interest. This is a high bar. Strict scrutiny is the highest bar of scrutiny that is available uh, under this sort of review, at least presently. I guess technically they could create another level at some point, but right now strict scrutiny is and has been for quite some time the highest bar for the government to justify a regulation or an exemption. In this case, it's exempting the Catholic Church from the ability to contract with the city to certify foster parents based specifically on the religious beliefs of the Catholic Church. There you go. So lots of people were watching this case. They thought it would be a split decision, right? You've got liberal justices, you've got conservative justices, and they thought, well, this will probably come down 6-3 or 5-4, you know, on conservative versus liberal lines. But no, 9-0. And let me suggest one possible reason as to why. Whatever you think of Chief Justice John Roberts, and believe me, there are lots of thoughts I have about Chief Justice John Roberts, and not all of them are favorable towards him. Actually, very few of them are favorable towards John Roberts. But the one thing that Roberts has done with his court, the Roberts court, has been consistently in favor of the First Amendment. They don't get it 100% right. They're not always unanimous. But the First Amendment has proven to be the stronghold of John Roberts since his tenure started as Chief Justice. That has largely been, that has largely been the hallmark of his court. And when, when law schools and history books talk about the Roberts Court, a lot of what they're going to talk about is their strong stance on First Amendment jurisprudence. So when you have a First Amendment case like this, you're going to see a lot of favorability towards those speech and religious protections as they have been hallmarks of the Roberts court. That's not the only reason. Strict scrutiny is the big reason, but that is a big reason is Roberts has managed to rally the justices around the idea of this particular subset of liberties, just that First Amendment one. And uh, that is, to his credit, despite all of the other discredit that he deserves. We'll give him that one thing. <laughs> one thing. All right, let's take a look at this article a little bit and see what's going on. Supreme Court sided unanimous, unanimously with a Catholic foster agency in a dispute against the city of Philadelphia over whether it should be banned from participating in the city's foster program because it excludes same-sex couples. The group Catholic Social Services claimed that Philadelphia's attempt to exclude the Catholic Church from foster care violated the First Amendment. And it does. It does. Lawyers for the city argued that Catholic Social Services lacks a constitutional right to demand that DHS, the Department of Human Services, not Homeland Security, offer it a contract that omits the same non-discrimination requirement every other uh, FF foster, fair, foster family certification agency must follow when performing services for the city. But they're wrong, though. Clearly, the Catholic Social Services... Uh, attorneys were right. The other ones were wrong because the Supreme Court said so. And I 100% I agree with this. You offer this thing. There are other agencies that do it. Now, if, if Philadelphia were to only contract with Catholic social services, uh, Mormon social services or whatever, like if they only did that and that ended up with the effect of excluding people based on sexual orientation then you have a different kind of claim against the city for not contracting with other agencies to allow those couples. Then you have a discrimination claim against the government. But this one is one government agency uh, contracting with one specific subcontractor who just has this religious exemption. And so since it's that small, uh, really what the court gets down to is that this is not a public accommodation. This is not the same thing as staying at a hotel, eating at a restaurant, or doing whatever. Um, Title VII is, uh, is the civil rights stuff, and, and state and city civil rights ordinances tend to, they, they tend to cover public accommodations, but they don't really cover sort of individualized things. Because if you get into um, specific individualized decisions, 
uh, with, with civil rights things, you start to get some absurd results. Uh, for example, let's, let's take it out of this context and do casting in Hollywood, right? If you're casting for a role and the role is a historical piece about a black person, for example, Martin Luther King, say Martin Luther King, you're going to do a Martin Luther King biopic and in your casting, you have a bunch of, uh, Asian people show up who want to play the role of Martin Luther King. Well, you can't be compelled to hire in a non-discriminatory way when the specific need of the role is that of a person with black skin. Like you're just not going to get around that. Uh, there is no, there is no racial discrimination involved or there's an exemption to the racial discrimination prohibitions in hiring for this particular thing, because it's such an individualized and particularized thing. It's not an open service to the public. Everybody in the public's not showing up to audition for a Hollywood role for Martin Luther King and all of that stuff. You're, you're not just walking up and making a transaction at a, like I said, at a sandwich counter or something like that, at a bar or restaurant, whatever. You've got a more individualized process. That's part of Chief Justice Roberts' reasoning here is because this is an individualized process. The, the idea of certifying foster parents. Remember, I said there's interviews, there's training, there's all this stuff that goes into it, that it, it goes beyond this public accommodation sort of setting, and it goes into a more focused thing. So here we go. Uh, CSS seeks only an accommodation that will allow it to continue serving the children of Philadelphia in a manner consistent with its religious beliefs. It does not seek to impose those beliefs on anyone else. The refusal of Philadelphia to contract with CSS for the provision of foster care services, unless it agrees to certify same-sex couples as foster parents, cannot survive strict scrutiny and violates the First Amendment. And uh, elsewhere in the opinion, he goes on to make the analogy about the hotel and, and, and sandwich counter. This is not a public accommodation. They're not trying to force people to be Catholic, to have access to the system. Uh, and again, what, what I said before was very critical. It does not prevent anyone from being certified by a different agency. You don't have to be Catholic and straight to get certified by Catholic social services. If you don't want to, if you don't want to be certified by them, if you're, if you're gay or whatever, you need to go just to any of the other social services places that will certify you as a foster parent. So what this court did not do, what this court did not do, I promise what, what it didn't do, which is probably as important is it did not overturn a 1990 ruling called Smith and Smith is a hot button. It's, it's a hot button, okay? Smith is this case. Let's, uh, let's, let's do it this way. Smith is a case that says that laws of general applicability, so laws that are applicable to basically everybody, can violate religious beliefs without triggering strict scrutiny. This is, in my opinion, a very, very poor decision. We do not want... Uh, well, I do not want religious beliefs being impacted absent strict scrutiny just because the law applies to everybody, because that allows you to create laws that apply to everybody, but target the religious beliefs of the few. And that is ultimately an issue here. And so many of the justices actually, uh, Justice Roberts opinion was like 15 pages. He wrote the main opinion for the court and it was joined by six of the justices. Alito, Alito wrote a 77 page concurrence that is kind of like a dissent, excoriating the court for having a pointless decision, toothless decision that does not, uh, that does not allow for the overturning of Smith. And this is a big point of contention here. So this is a 9-0 unanimous decision, but in a way it's 6-3 because three of the conservative justices, and it was uh, Alito, Thomas, and I think Gorsuch had, uh, had this opinion that Smith needs to be overturned, but Barrett, Kavanaugh, Roberts, they all stuck with, uh, with the three liberal justices and saying, we don't want to touch, we, we don't want to touch Smith. That's a, that's a can of worms. That's very scary for the court 
to mess with Smith. But Alito's point in his concurrence, which reads like a dissent, is that by failing to overturn Smith, Philadelphia has can just make a couple tweaks to its policy, and suddenly these parties are going to be having the same case again come back to the court. Because Philadelphia's policy allows the individual exemptions, the individualized exemptions, that's what allowed the uh, Catholic Church to say, no, they're targeting us in an individual way. If if the Philadelphia city passed some sort of ordinance or whatever and made a law of general applicability rather than having individualized exemptions in regards to how they do their foster care contracting, it is possible that that would, uh, under Smith, be permissible and allow them to exclude the Catholic Church. And then, of course, the Catholic Church would sue again, and it would be multiple years in the making to get back to the Supreme Court to ultimately resolve the issue. That's the problem here. They were afraid to tackle Smith, and that is ultimately going to come up at some point. And there are judges uh, that are ready to go on Smith, but a couple that were too timid today and did not think this was the right case. But Smith is coming, and if that gets changed, and it very well could under this court get changed, we're going to see some pretty interesting results from it. But that being said, today, religious liberty wins. Uh, the people who are in favor of trying to frame this as an LGBTQ essential rights case, one, they were framing it ex absurdly incorrectly. This was not about LGBTQ rights in any particular way, and those rights were not being infringed by anyone. LGBTQ couples uh, and, and you know, in, in the uh, Philadelphia area can still be certified as foster parents. There's, uh, they just can't do it through the Catholic Church, and I'm not sure why you would seek certification through the Catholic Church anyway, <laughs> given their uh, open religious beliefs about it. But that's me. What do you guys think? Drop a comment down below. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace. Peace.